Hi, welcome back. This is DW Berman, and you're watching another graphics kind of tutorial. Uh, last time we kind of covered the basics of a character animator that, that comes with Adobe Creative Suite, and that uh, just using it to to automate a mouth animation. And then we brought the the resulting frame sequence into Lightwave, and uh, we got this option. We got this this mess here. So it's just a texture pasted on a ball, and that's that that can be cool for depending on what you want to do. That may be all you need, and I, I will probably use this technique. I have used this technique um, on other characters, not necessarily in Lightwave. Nope, I've used it in Lightwave too. Yeah, so um, I, I've used this method to actually animate stuff. Um, but now I wanted to take it a step further and actually use it to drive a morph map. So let's uh, let me like, let me bring in a new object here. Uh, the mouth object. So here, I have it facing backwards. This scary disembodied mouth. <laughs> it's kind of odd looking. Uh, first thing I want to do is go to the properties and uh, go to the... Nope, wrong properties. I want to be on the object. There we go. Object properties. Okay. So we have some some morph morphs on here some endomorphs as they call them there's the mmm shape let's set that back we have the k sound you notice it looks all chunky and nasty there there's a reason for that let's go to the geometry tab and set the subdivision order to last so that it's subdividing after the morph so there we go and you know going in we have these aren't made to blend together and you're not going to blend from one shape to the other this is more like an object replacement type of thing. Like, think of uh, uh, Jack Skellington in Nightmare Before Christmas, where they swapped out his head to get the different mouth shapes, uh, as opposed to A Corpse Bride, where they actually had a little mechanical things inside the puppet heads where they could open and change the shape of the mouth based on turning really small screws. So those are the, the mouth shapes. You'll notice that these actually correspond to the mouth shapes that are on the puppet so let's uh let's load up one of the puppets let me see should be in recent oh that's not, i don't know what i selected there okay uh mouth here's an old version of, of the mouth so you can see down here on on the layer panels we have neutral smile surprised uh basically all of these things here and we have all of those shapes represented over here, although they're kind of in a different order. So we'll just have to be a little bit careful. So, uh, but how do we get from here, where we have a picture of something, to here, where we're actually driving a shape? Well, we do that by, instead of showing a, a mouth shape, we're just going to fill these with different shades of, of gray. So... Let's say the, the neutral is going to be our base, so let's uh, set that to black. So there's our, our black neutral. And uh, our, our last one will be W-O, or the O sound, so let's make that white. And each step in between, we're just going to do a different uh, shade of gray. So we would basically come in here and do this. I did uh, originally get these evenly spaced and it looked all nice and neat but then i ran into a problem with the light wave color spaces uh trying to reinterpret the colors and and bring the basically the the since we will be using a color gradient node it's going to try to do color processing on it which we don't want but there are other ways around it but eventually i decided that you know okay getting it exactly uh getting the these colors exactly spaced along the gradient line here was not necessary so eventually you just want to fill them up also i uh put a little tag on these so it's like say this would be the surprised so and also i should say that i did not uh, make that this this a very large image i just went with a 64 pixel by 64 pixel image so uh and then I did that. I labeled it and made it really light so then we could still read it, but it wasn't affecting the color too much. So we just know which color swatch we're looking at. And I ended up with um, this. So here is our list. You notice it's a really small image. I'll zoom it up a couple of times. 
So there's our smile one, then surprise, then ah, then D, then E, then F. So we have all our different phonemes, but instead of having a mouth shape, we just have a, a mouth color or a mouth uh, grayness, a gray value. So uh, we can bring that into the, well, we'll bring that into the um, character animator. And we'll take a look at it there. So we, since I made it smaller, I'll just drag this in. So here we have our mouth gray dot. Again, it's rotating and stuff. We don't want it rotating. So let's go to our, our face settings and turn the scale and tilt strength down. So we can also get rid of this other one here. We don't need that anymore. And let's change the scene size. Since we are going smaller, we don't need 800 pixels wide. We can do 62 pixels wide. Why 62? Well, because I'm getting this weird little border. So let's uh, go back to our puppet and transform. And we'll move it over to the left one, so negative one. And then to the right, negative, or to the top, negative one. So there we have it filled out. And uh, again, we can just go to Object, Compute, Lip Sync from Scene Audio, making sure our puppet, in this case our gray squares, is loaded. And it'll uh, compute the lip sync from the Scene Audio, which is still our Captain's Log Wave audio file. And then we just go through the whole export process again, which I've already showed in the other video, so I'm not going to show you that here. Well, I guess I will, in case you didn't watch the other video. So we'll just wait for this to finish the lip sync computing. And we're done. Okay, then we just go up to the file menu and there's an export and we can export the scene and it'll export the audio and stuff together. So I'm, I've already done that, so I'm not gonna do that now. Uh, now let's go to our image editor and we will bring in our other image test. So let's see, this was scene mouth grays. Open, make sure that it is on sequence. We wanna make sure that our frame rate matches uh, the frame rate that we used in, in Character Animator. If I scrub through here, you'll see that it's just flat, flickering different colors. And uh, using layout time, it will enable us to actually see what it's doing based on the timeline itself. And sorry if the timeline is loud. Um, okay, I'll try not to talk and, and scrub the timeline at the same time. Okay, what do we want to do? We want to change the shape of this. So let's go to the Object Properties and Deform, and we'll just remove that. And we'll click on the checkbox next to Edit Nodes and click Edit Nodes. First thing we're going to add is a gradient. So I'll double click the gradient. Then we need to add the image because we're doing driving this with an image map. So we'll double click that and bring that in. And we will need to use our morph map. So these are under Vertex Map, Morph Map. And our first morph map is going to be neutral. How do I know? Well, let's just uh, match it up with the Photoshop. So why did I close Photoshop when I knew I was going to open it again? OK. Do -do -do. Mouth gray. We'll just, yeah, we'll load mouth gray. OK, now let's drag this off to the side. OK, so here's our layer panel from Photoshop. And it shows all of our different layers and the order they're in. So we start with black at neutral and we go to the U or the W sound at uh, white. <sighs> okay, so taking deep breaths. What we want to do is we want to plug the luma value out of the image into the input so that the brightness value of our image is driving which morph map it gets seen. And that gets plugged into the displacement input, which is kind of the output of the whole flow. But where does this get plugged into? Well, to do that, we need to double click the gradient node, and that brings up our gradient panel. There are 13 mouth shapes, so let's add uh, 12 more things. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Did I count that right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. And I will click distribute keys, although that will cause problems. 
but uh, we'll get to that. This, is, this was part of the learning process. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to give uh, this a place to plug into. So let's go to our gradient node. We'll click Show Output. And you notice that we can plug this into Key 1 now. We're just going to go, going to go down the list of all of these and repeat that process. So And uh, that's pretty much where I'm going to stop for now. <laughs> so... We'll copy this layer, paste. I'm going to ignore smile and surprise. Those are three in, there are two and three, since I didn't animate those anyway. So smile, surprise, so the next one is ah. So we go to ah, and I'll plug that into four. And uh, the next one would be D, and that gets plugged into Next one's a D. There we go. And that gets plugged into 5. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to load up a scene that I had already connected all the stuff up on. So let me load scene. And it's, of course, uh, in the wrong directory. So... So here's what we ended up with. We have 13 different morph maps plugged into 13 different keys, all driven by this image. Now, um, I'm going to copy this and paste it over here. Now, when you do this normally, remember we distributed the keys. So what we had was all of these unlocked. When you right click on this, the space over on the left, it unlocks it or locks it. So Here's what we had um, by default, and let's get rid of our our uh, grid. <sighs> so let's take a look at our scene now. If I hit play, this will look. A Repairs little are nearing completion after our encounter with the Kardashian cruiser. I still feel a little bad about the way things ended between us, but I really think it was for the best. In hindsight, her complete and utter destruction. Let me just turn audio scrubbing off. There we go. So there we go. We have the th sound being shown an awful lot. And let's go to our image editor so we can see, again, with this check to auto use layout time, we can see exactly what phoneme it should be showing. And it should be showing the uh or the O oh sound. And it's not. It's showing the, the th sound. So it, instead of showing the... Uh, the was it, this would be the the eleventh thing is showing the thirteenth or the twelfth thing. So let's go back to our edit nodes and we'll take a look at this. So it should be showing that, but it's showing uh, this. So we want it to be showing this one. Blah blah blah. So this would be key eleven. So let's take a look at key eleven. Let me bring this down. Do, do key 11. So here we have, we see the position is 833, three, and that position is wrong. So we need to see what position we are actually getting. And since I have the image node here, I can just take the probe and look at the Luma output. Oh, I need to plug the Luma in there. We can just take the Luma output and hover over it. And hey, look, it should be 0 0.9333, 3, and it is 0.8333. And we are frame five something. So let's change this to nine three three three. And hey, look, it's the proper thing. Now this is messed up somehow. I don't know exactly why this morph map is getting messed up. It's the only one that is, but uh, it does. Anyway, so we've we've typed in the proper value. So let's hit right click on that X to lock it in place because even just selecting these things sometimes changes the position on them. So anyway, uh, let's see. We have the mm, the M sound. So let's see. If I bring the image editor up, we can actually... Oh, it is up. It's just hidden. There we go. Let's move that over there. So now we can see that should be the M, and it looks like it's the M, but let's lock in the exact position that it should be in. 
Okay, L, M, okay, there's M, and this is on 10, so our frame 10, I already had it selected, and this should be, again, 8, 9, 4, 1. There we go, you saw a subtle move, maybe. Let's lock that into place. Now let's, uh, See which shape is that? That's E, and that would be key six. So let's go to key six. Hey, I got the right one. Key six, and that should be five, seven, two, five. So point is five, seven, two, five. And again, lock it. And that's basically just going through the whole list, and you end up with this other gradient node here where I did actually go through and I made all of those corrections. So let's take a look at what this looks like after I reconnect all of these. Well, I'll just reload the scene. So here's what it looks like after... Repairs are nearing completion after our encounter with the Kardashian cruiser. I still feel a little bad about the way things think it was for the best. In hindsight, her complete and utter destruction may have been avoidable, but we survived the encounter with our honor intact, and that's all that matters to me. I am confident that history... So there you have it. We have gone from a, uh, a 2D application that is auto-syncing voices uh, to, to show different mouth shapes, and we've used that to actually drive geometry changes in Lightwave. So uh, hopefully you can use this in, in uh, some of your productions. Again, it's not going to be as good as hand animating things, but uh, for an automated method, I think it works pretty well for a quick and dirty thing. And it's also this technique should also be able to uh, be adapted to other 3D applications as well. So hope you enjoyed watching this. Uh, if you did, please uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Comment below if you have any uh, questions or, or comments, because you know that's always fun to interact with you all. Um, also at liberty3d.com, I have some tutorials for sale. Nothing, nothing new and recent, because uh, I've been busy with life. But there are a lot of other really good tutorials by some great artists over there. Some really good training. Uh, we even have some some real flow training. Uh, that have recently taken off. So we have, you know, Lightwave, um, 3D Coat, ZBrush, Modo training, as well as, again, a real flow quick start guide. Uh, you can find my videos specifically there for Lightwave and there under the Citizens DW Berman Dana's videos. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.